Okay, everybody, I'm recording it so that uh, we will, so that you will be able to see it again if you really want, but also anybody else uh, can see it who is not here now. That's a great flag made up there, uh, uh, Silver Spring. Um, okay, so sulfur. Can anybody tell me which group sulfur is in? Can anybody tell me which group of the periodic table sulfur is in? Come on, it's a competition. Which group? Come, Atari. Dandora says six. Dandora was first. Dandora gets the gold medal. Today, the go that's the end of the lesson. That's all we need to know. No, okay, I joke. So uh, Dandora gets a gold medal for that. Does anybody know which period row sulfur is in? So sulfur is in group six. Which period, which row is sulfur in? Well, Dandora trying to get two gold medals. Sulfur is period three. I think maybe Dandora are cheating and maybe they have a periodic table that they are looking at. <laughs> maybe not. Okay, no, they know. Okay. So if sulfur is in group six, it will have it's not in period, it's not in period four, Glory, it's in period three. Hydrogen helium is the first period, then lithium period, and it's in the sodium period. Um, it goes across, it's on the sodium period. Um, so, if it has six, sorry, if it is in group six, it has six electrons in the outermost shell. Okay, six electrons in the outermost shell. If it wants to react, if it is going to react, it needs to gain two electrons. It could lose six, but that is too difficult. So, it tends to pick up two. So sulfur is generally seen as a non-metal. It's very non-metallic. We'll see an example of it in a minute. Non-metallic. It's fairly reactive because it's near the top of group six. Only oxygen is above it. On the left-hand side of the periodic table, that is, please mute, Silver Spring. Uh, <laughs> right. Try, try until you are answering a question, please try to keep your microphones off. Thank you. Somebody else? Abiro? Recording in progress. I guys, I am I am recording this already and I will send it to your teachers. Uh, via um, challenge aid, okay? So, it has six electrons in the outermost shell. It's in group six. It's towards the far right-hand side of the periodic table. Uh, because of that, it is second only to group seven in reactivity, group six. And it's the second one down. It goes oxygen, then sulfur. And their sulfur is the second most reactive element in group six. So let's find out a little bit about it. Um, and what we're going to try to do is, uh, let's just have a look, see if I can get that up. Okay, so um, here we are. This is uh, the uh, beginning of sulfur. I've picked the yellow color because that's the color of sulfur. And it doesn't matter how you spell it. Um, a few years ago, uh, it, was, it was some people tried to change the spelling of sulfur from PH to F because it's more obvious. Um, but uh, these days, most people don't mind how you spell it. S-U-L-P-H or S-U-L-F. Doesn't matter. So this is firstly a little bit, don't bother writing this down. This is a little bit about what's on the syllabus. 
So you need to know about where it's found and how we get it out. You need to know about what happens when we set fire to it, about its oxides, sulfur four oxide, and eventually sulfur six oxide, though that doesn't form when we burn it. We need to know about the manufacture of sulfuric acid, how sulfuric acid reacts. We need to know about hydrogen sulfide, and that's it. Now, we uh, <clears throat> the, the sort of questions that we get are these ones. These are the sort of questions which come up on K, uh, KCNSE um, examinations. So we've got the fresh process, which is for getting the sulfur out of the ground. We need to know what the allotropes are of sulfur. We need to know about its uses and its reactions, how we make SO2, how we make H2S, that's sulfur four oxide or sulfur dioxide and hydrogen sulfide. And then we need to know about the properties and tests for SO2 and only the tests for H2S. Then they often ask questions about the manufacture of sulfuric acid H2SO4 and its chemical properties, though they tend to be quite simple. So here's some sulfur. Uh, <clears throat> this is a picture of a guy on a volcanic uh, area. Um, and he has been uh, looking at the sulfur. It comes out of the ground like this some of the time, but most of the time it is found in certain parts of the world, like the United States, um, where most of the sulfur comes from, underground. It is yellow. It is a non-metal, as we have said. It is completely insoluble in water, and it boils at 444 degrees Celsius. So that person there is holding a lump of it. The reason they have the, um, the breathing apparatus is because whenever there is sulfur, there is sulfur dioxide. And sulfur dioxide is really irritant uh, in low concentration and toxic if it gets high. So this is something you need to know about, but do not draw the picture. This is something called the fresh process. And what happens is this. The problem with sulfur is it is often trapped underneath not very solid ground. OK, don't bother drawing this. I'll show you something better in just a minute. So it is trapped underneath not very solid ground. Sometimes in America, some of it is under quicksand. So that when people used to put a proper well head and so on up above it or drive earth moving machinery onto it, it could collapse. So they came up with a, a method for getting it out, which involves melting the sulfur underground and then sort of blowing it up to the top. So here we go. This is what the system looks like. I'll be describing it more in just a minute. I'll try and explain it better than this in just a minute. So if you look at it, it looks like there are three pipes. There's one, the light blue one. Then there's a yellow one around that and a darker blue one around that. In the central tube, the central one there, air is blown down the central tube. The second tube carries molten sulfur up to the top. And then the outer tube is superheated steam or water. Sometimes it's under enough pressure for it to be superheated water, and sometimes it's steam. Most of the KNEC examinations I have seen have suggested that the best answer is superheated water, not steam. I'll just stop sharing for just one moment. So what I want you to get is that we have three tubes. We have a small one in the middle, and then we have another one round the outside of that, and another one round the outside of that. The central one has air blown down it. Then that one is surrounded by another one that the sulfur comes up, and the outer one, which is the biggest one, which goes round all of it, 
is superheated water which goes down and is pumped down into the sulfur and melts the sulfur and the sulfur comes up as a sort of foam. Now, because water and sulfur do not mix, when it comes up to the top, the water and sulfur separate and the sulfur uh, solidifies. So we'll go back to sharing that screen again. So just here it is again. So look at this, there we have the three tubes. The blue one is outside, the yellow one is inside that one, and then the light blue one is inside that one. So the superheated water goes down, melts the sulfur, which is then blown back up, partly by the pressure of the water, but also the air, which is blowing it up. OK, that's the fresh process. We'll see a question of it towards the end. OK. OK. So this is what sulfur looks like, or at least this is two examples of what sulfur looks like. Um, let me just move me up a bit. So they're called allotropes. Now, allotropes are just different arrangements of the same atoms. Now, the first thing you need to know is that sulfur usually exists in S8 rings, rings of eight sulfurs joined together. If you start to heat it up, it breaks into fours and twos and ones, and then they recombine again. Here are the two examples which you are expected to know about. The one which looks like needles is very, very thin crystals, is called monoclinic. And the other one is a series of rhombuses. OK, so it's called rhombic. And the rhombic ones start at a form at a lower temperature than the monoclinic ones. But you don't need to know that. The question will ask, can you name an allotrope of sulfur? So monoclinic or rhombic. OK, so so far, so good. Not too bad. So it melts at around about each. Uh, each allotrope melts at a slightly different temperature, but it's just over the boiling temperature of water. That's its melting point. It boils at 444. Here are some uses of sulfur. Um, and it's important to know one or two of them. The most important one actually is for making sulfuric acid. That's this one down here at the bottom. I don't know if you can see my cursor moving. Bit difficult on this background. Down at the bottom where it says stage one and so on, this is the making sulfuric acid. It is used, uh, some of you may have used it, for wounds uh, in an ointment uh, because bacteria don't like it. It's used in the heads of matches down at the bottom on the right and it is used in vulcanization that is producing uh, making natural rubber a bit harder for making tires for vehicles. OK, so you only usually need to know just one, just one use. So like the last sli slide, learn just one allotrope if you are finding it difficult and just one use. OK. OK, I'm going to just stop for just one moment. OK, do we have any questions? Do we have any questions so far? So far, fairly simple, I think. But do we have any questions that somebody would like to ask about what we have done so far? Not about sulfur dioxide or anything like that, because we will come across that. No. Nope. OK, we're good. OK, then I shall. You just put your hand up if you want to ask one. So we here we are. We're back sharing. Now we're going to look at a little video. And the little video is a, a very simple one about taking some iron and some sulfur and getting them to react. And what I want you to observe is that when you have sulfur and iron mixed together, it looks mainly like iron. When they burn and they do burn together, they combine to make something different. If you wanted to separate the iron from the sulfur, you could use a magnet. But afterwards, when it has turned into iron sulfide, you cannot. The other thing you will see is some blue flames, which are the color which sulfur burns in. OK. 
So let's see if this is going to work. So there's a mixture of sulfur and iron being mixed together. I quite like his guitar music. So you can see it may, looks mainly like iron now. The sulfur is hidden inside it. Crazy guitar music. And now he's going to use a Bunsen to heat up a glass rod. So the glass rod gets hot. You can always tell when glass is hot because it shows sodium coming off it, which is that orange flame. And that heat is enough to set it off. Ah, and you can see the blue of the burning sulfur there. And now it is all joined together. OK, so it all joins together um, and forms iron sulfide. So if you wanted to write an equation, it's very simple because it would be Fe plus S goes to FeS. OK, Fe plus S goes to FES. OK, one for you. Let's see if you can name these. I'd like you just to spend a moment to see if you can name all these compounds and ions. Uh, see if you can name them all. Just have a go. Share with your neighbour. Just have a chat with somebody else and see if you can talk about what they might be called. I'll be giving you the answers in just a minute. So there are six of them. You have a maximum of six to score. I will give you all the answers in just a minute. Busharika girls there having a good talk about it. Glory looking very cool about it. Dandora looked like they know the answer. Mathari working very hard. I like it. Silver Spring, Glory, Kabiro. How are you getting on? Okay, are we ready? Are we ready for the answers, Glory? No, not yet. Dandora, okay, we have a moment yet. SO2, SO3, H2SO4, H2S, SO4, 2 minus, SO3, 2 minus. Oh, Mathari makes. Let's have a look. Hang on. Let me just hang on. I'll just have to pin you, make you a little bit bigger. Sulfur. Hang on. I've just got to try and make you bigger. Hang on. Sulfur two and three. It's not two and three. It is sulfuric acid, sulfuric six acid. It is hydrogen sulfide and it is sulfate and sulfite. You've got four. OK, you've got four there. That's very good. It's very good. We've got quite a lot of people with quite a lot. Uh, hang on, Dandora. Let me just have a quick look. Uh, where's Dandora gone? Oh, come on. Oops. Sorry. Hang on. Sorry, my screen is not behaving today. Hang on. Just a moment. Sorry, Mix. Get rid of the pin. Come on. <laughs> Okay, Mathari, let me just have a look at yours. Hang on, I just want to see what we got. Uh, Mathari, let's see if we can make it bigger. Oh, very good. Uh, not quite at the end, five out of six. Very good. Uh, Dan Dora, hang on, let's just, oops, I'm just trying to make your screen bigger so I can see it. Dan Dora. Very good indeed. 
Well done, Cabero. Very, very close. Lots and lots of people doing very, very well indeed. So let's just minimize and I'm going to give the answers to everybody so everybody can see them. Hang on. Here we go. Here are the answers. Sulfur 4 oxide, which is acceptable as sulfur dioxide. Sulfur 6 oxide, which is sulfur trioxide. Sulfuric 6 acid. I like that you use the oxidation numbers, everybody. It's very good. Hydrogen sulfide, sulfate 6, and sulfate 4, or sulfate and sulfite. Sulfate 6 and sulfate 4 are better because the, the 8 just means that it's a negative ion and normally means it's got oxygen with it. So that means sulfur with oxygen, uh, a negative ion, and 6 tells me the oxidation state of the sulfur and the 4 tells me that the sulfur has only got four bonds. OK, very good. I'm really impressed with your naming. Great. So here's a bit about sulfur dioxide. Um, you don't need to know very much because they don't ask very much about it, except about two things. One is the skull and crossbones at the bottom, meaning it's toxic. And the second one is that it is very soluble in water and more dense than air, because this tells us how it will be collected. It is very soluble in water, so it cannot be collected over water, but it is more dense than air, so it can displace air upwards. Here's the preparation. Here's the preparation. And if the, in this, you can see we have sodium sulfite down here. Don't bother about bisulfite. Sodium sulfite down here and hydrochloric acid up at the top. OK. Now that means, let's see if I can write on this. Can I write on this? Um, okay, this means that I have HCl and sodium sulfite, which is Na2SO3. And this will form the uh, anions will swap, so the Na ends up with the chlorine, and I'm going to get H2SO3. It will balance with two NaCl's and two HCl's. Now, because it's heated, the H2SO3 will split into H2O and the SO2. OK, so the SO2 then gets dried by the concentrated sulfuric acid. So this is drying it. OK, and then it's collected here at the end because it is denser than air. So the sulfur dioxide goes down and the air goes up. All right. So see if you can spot this equation 2HCl, Na2SO3. 2NaCl, H2SO3, which then splits up because it's heated into H2O and SO2. Now, the most common question here is what is used for drying the SO2? And why is it not collected over yeah. water? Why is it not collected over water? And uh, sometimes they ask you to draw the end of, so they show you the whole apparatus and then you have a, a tube coming out, which uh, basically only just sort of uh, ends and you have to draw um, a beaker or something underneath it, a gas jar with the pipe going down into it. OK. So there we are. So that's the preparation and drying and collection of SO2. All right, I hope that's useful. OK, so I'm going to go for a moment. All right, sharing. Right. 
So there we are. That's that's that one. Now uh, you need to know a test for sulfur dioxide. And because sulfur dioxide can be easily oxidized to sulfur trioxide, sulfur four oxide to sulfur six oxide, any oxidizing agent will oxidize it. So the two most common ones you know about will be potassium dichromate six and potassium manganate seven. Uh, somebody's not muted. Could you, could you mute me? Yes, I will see. Somebody, somebody is muted. Not... Sorry, that's fine. God, Godfrey, can you mute? Mr. Godfrey, from your side, can you mute? Thank you very much. You can mute them from there, Mark, as well. Yes, I know, but not while I'm sharing a screen. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Sorry. Um, thank you very much. Okay, so the test for sulfur dioxide. Um, you get a lot of uh, effervescence when you make sulfur dioxide, but that is not a test because... You get, you get the same with carbon dioxide. Um, so we need to test with a chemical. And the test is we use um, potassium dichromate, which is orange. I always teach my students to remember the name of potassium dichromate is orange potassium dichromate. And then you remember that it's orange and it goes green. The other tests are that uh, potassium manganate which is purple, potassium manganate goes colorless, or <laughs> iron can be used as well. Iron three will go to iron two, and that's also orange to green. Just remember one of them. Just remember one of them. Okay, so there's a, there's a test for sulfur dioxide. Simple stuff. Okay. Chemical properties of sulfur dioxide. The first thing, the first thing is that it is very, very soluble in water, um, but it does not affect indicator papers until it is damp. So you have to dampen the indicator paper. So when you dampen the indicator paper, the paper will change normally from blue to green if it's litmus. Sorry, blue to red if it's litmus or sort of yellowy green to red if it's universal indicator. So it's very soluble in water and forms an acid. It is easily oxidized, which we have already said, by oxidizing agent, potassium, orange potassium dichromate, orange iron three chloride, purple potassium manganate. And the last bit is that when water mixes with sulfur four oxide, we get sulfite or sulfate four ions, and they form a white precipitate with barium. Okay, with barium ions, sulfite <laughs> form a white precipitate, unless we add an acid. Okay, so the main things are very soluble in water, forming an acid, Easily oxidized, potassium dichromate, orange potassium dichromate goes green, orange iron chloride goes green, potassium manganate goes purple to colorless, and it forms sulfite or sulfate four ions. Okay, let's see if we've got them. Um, any questions? And is everybody okay, or do we have some questions now? Anybody got any questions? Somebody's got a question at Dandora. Oh, or, or are you okay? You're okay. <laughs> Sorry, you're okay. All right. Okay. Mathari seemed to be okay. Some Marys uh, mostly okay. Some are not quite so okay. Okay. All right. So um, now what we're going to do is we're going to go on a little bit further uh, with the sharing of the screen. Oh, we have a question. Uses of, sorry, put it up again, Silver Spring, please. Silver Spring, show me again. Sorry, you were a bit too quick there. 
uses of sulfur, the, the main use of sulfur is to produce sulfuric acid, um, but it's also used in ointment for medicine um, and a few other things like match heads. Okay, so I'm moving on. H2S, hydrogen sulfide. Uh, hydrogen sulfide is very unpleasant. Uh, it smells of bad eggs. Uh, it is slightly soluble in water. Um, you need to know the test for it and how to make it. This is how we make it. So again, we've got dilute hydrochloric acid, which goes in through the top. But this time it's iron sulfide. OK, iron sulfide. So what will happen is that we will have, let's see if I can write this again. So we have hydrochloric acid. Why is this not writing? Ah, hydrochloric <laughs> acid and iron sulfide. Remember from that uh, with the little video we saw, iron sulfide, iron plus sulfur makes iron sulfide. Really easy equation because it's FES. This forms H2S and FeCl2. So we would balance with 2HCl. <laughs> and this uh, is in solution. So we would have, uh, this is AQ. This is solid. This is a gas, so it goes. And this is AQ. And hydrogen sulfide, again, is den more dense than air. And so it goes down to the bottom. Uh, of the gas jar and pushes the air out of the top. <coughs> the interesting thing about hydrogen sulfide is that it smells of bad eggs, but if it gets too concentrated, our noses give up smelling. Okay, they, they, they won't smell it anymore. And because they don't smell it, if it gets really concentrated, we don't know that it's very concentrated. And that's really important because that means we can be overcome by it. We can be overcome by it and we don't know that it's there. So this is it. Hydrogen sulfide formed from hydrochloric acid and iron sulfide. Fairly simple. Yeah. So, here are the, here's the test for hydrogen sulfide. We use lead acetate paper. Lead acetate is the same as ethanoate. Um, somebody's got a bird in the background. Could somebody mute, please? There we are. That's easy. Good. So here is the test for it. Um, we have a piece of paper which goes from white to a black color. And that is uh, before and after. And this uh, here is the paper which contains lead acetate. OK, lead acetate. Uh, the chemical properties, Kibero, of sulfur or sulfur dioxide. Kibero, just type it into there. Sulfur dioxide, Kibero. I, I will assume it was sulfur dioxide. The sulfur dioxide chemical properties are that it was very soluble in water, forming an acid. Very soluble in water, forming an acid. I will write that one down in just a moment. It is easily oxidized to SO3. And when it dissolves in water, it forms sulfite or sulfate four ions. OK, but this is the test for hydrogen sulfide. Lead acetate goes black. Uh, the reason for that is that when we have lead ions and sulfide ions, 
they form lead sulfide and this is black whereas these two are both colorless okay so that's what happens here oops sorry that's there okay so the lead ions from lead acetate pick up the sulfide ions and before and form this black stuff uh, lead sulfide I'm just going to go back because Kibera wanted to look at the properties of uh, SO2. And I'm just going to write something here, which may help. Um, so SO2 dissolves in water very, very easily to form H2SO3. This is sometimes called sulfurous acid. Now, because it's, a, it's an acid, it splits up. All acids split up in a reversible reaction to form hydrogen ions and HSO3 minus, but that can split up again to form another hydrogen ion and SO3 two minus. So this top bit here is talking about the, whoops, oh, come on. Saying that it's soluble. This is showing that it is acidic. And this is showing the sulfite or sulfate four ions okay so here these are the three bits to it the first bit it just shows it dissolving in water the second bit it shows it produces hydrogen ions and the third shows that it forms the sulfite or the sulfate four okay so that's the three main properties oh sorry apart from the oxidation the oxidation is so2 plus an o in square brackets means oxidizing agent turns into SO3. So that is easily done by potassium manganate, potassium dichromate or iron three. OK, so I'm moving on. So there's the test for that. Um, I'm not going to bother with that because it's I don't think you're going to get an answer. I've, I've already dealt with the bit at the bottom. I'm not going to bother about the blue flame and so on, because this is the most important part of the whole uh, day, really, in that most of the questions you get are about the contact process. And the contact process <coughs> is a huge industrial process. It is done in most countries. Uh, we all buy our sulfur from America or Russia places like that, hopefully not from Russia at the moment. Um, and uh, they are, it is very important process because it produces sulfuric acid, which is used a huge amount. I don't want you to draw this. I will talk through it and I will write the equations for you. Just look at the picture for a minute. So at the beginning, I hope you can see my, uh, my cursor there. We have sulfur and dry air going into a furnace and the sulfur and the dry air burn the sulfur burns in the air to form sulfur dioxide but more air is pumped in than is necessary so coming through here afterwards is so2 and some excess oxygen okay so we get so2 formed in here then we get so2 and further oxygen going along and it comes up a pipe and it goes into this which is called a catalytic converter. OK, the catalytic converter contains vanadium 5 oxide, is about 450 degrees Celsius. And although it doesn't say it on here, there's about a two or three atmosphere pressure pushing it through. After this, the SO3 is formed and the SO3 is added, seems a little bit weird, but it's added to sulfuric acid 
to form something called oleum, which is then diluted with water to make sulfuric acid. So I'll write the equation. So, but basically, sulfur burns, sulfur dioxide is reoxidized to make SO3. The SO3 is reacted with sulfuric acid. I'm sorry, my picture's in the way, isn't it? Can I move it? No, not very clever. Uh, sulfuric acid comes in the top. This shower is sulfuric acid. And that makes something called oleum, which has water added to it to make sulfuric acid. So let's look at the equations. So here we go. So the first thing is that we have sulfur burning in oxygen. That's really simple. It burns with a blue flame. The blue flame is very beautiful, really beautiful, really bright blue flame. Amazing. The air here, this is air, not oxygen. In other words, um, we don't use oxygen because oxygen is too expensive, but that means we push a lot of nitrogen through the whole system. That doesn't matter. That's worth it. OK, so then the sulfur dioxide is re-oxidized. We said that there is excess oxygen. So I'll just say that up here. This is excess. So sulfur and oxygen react in a reversible reaction to make SO3. Now, it balances with two of those and two of those. And you have to know that this is with V2O5, which is vanadium 5 oxide, and it is 450 degrees Celsius. And is it sort of two or three atmospheres pressure? In other words, not very much pressure at all. And around about 98% of it comes out as SO3. OK, that's amazing. Because in reversible reactions, you probably know about reversible reactions, but they go both, go both ways. So it's not great for making things because as soon as you make the product, it unmakes itself, which is pretty annoying. Now, the sulfur trioxide, it looks like what we want to do is this. Because when I add H2O to SO3, I get H2SO4, but it doesn't work. It doesn't work. It forms, um, it doesn't really dissolve properly. So what we do instead is we get H, uh, SO3 and we add it to some sulfuric acid we have already made. And it makes h 2 s 2 O7. That's really quite easy to write that equation because if you just add them all together, you find, look, we've got two hydrogens, two hydrogens, one sulfur here, two sulfurs there, so H2S2 and seven oxygens. And this is called, whoops, hello, where's that gone? This is called, where am I? This is called oleum, sometimes called fuming sulfuric acid. It is really, really dangerous. That then is mixed with water. Well, whoops. Is added to water in an absorber to make two H2SO4. So there's the sulfuric acid at the end. OK. So burn the sulfur reoxidize it and so on now they sometimes ask questions like um the uh whoops sorry, what's happening here uh the air is purified and they say why and that is because if we don't have purified air it will poison the catalyst
and that makes it very very expensive so we don't want the air with the impurities to poison the catalyst so we purify it okay right is that okay do we does everybody have that is everybody okay about that can i remove that slide has everybody got it show me a thumb is that okay cool ashrika cool mathari dandora girls have gone to sleep okay glory good okay so moving on here are the properties of sulfuric acid uh, we're getting close to the end guys so uh, thank you very much so far but uh, just patience for the last bit now th there is a real difference between dilute and concentrated sulfuric acid dilute sulfuric acid is not really very dangerous it is an acid and we would not want it in our eyes uh, or even on our clothes but dilute sulfuric acid is only an acid and when we do acids and bases we will write equations for sulfuric acid it's simple but concentrated sulfuric acid is very different concentrated sulfuric acid is an acid it is an oxidizing agent and a dehydrating agent that's important it is an acid it is an oxidizing agent and a dehydrating agent acid oxidizing agent. Uh, my, pic my picture is over the top of the first bit, isn't it? I'm sorry about that. Okay, so acid, oxidizing agent, and dehydrating agent. So when it is acting as an oxidizing agent, concentrated sulfuric acid oxidizes elements. So it will oxidize a metal. For instance, it would oxidize copper. So here is copper. And when copper reacts with concentrated sulfuric acid, it will form copper oxide. And then the copper oxide would react with the acid to make copper sulfate. Now you can tell whenever concentrated sulfuric acid is acting as an oxidizing agent it forms so2 sulfur 4 not sulfur 6 oxide so h2so4 if you look an equation and you find h2so4 that's sulfur please mute sulfur in 6 state here and then in a 4 <laughs> silver spring thank you so whenever you see sulfuric acid sulfur six and then sulfur four you know the sulfuric acid has been oxidizing something okay so you often don't you wouldn't have to write an equation like this you might need to recognize it it's a dehydrating agent, and we will see an example of this in just a minute. Concentrated sulfuric acid dehydrates. Now, dehydrates does not is not the same as dry. It was used to dry SO2. It was used to dry SO2, but it is a dehydrating agent. Guys, could somebody say director bundles in the silver spring? Can you please me? Silver spring, silver spring, can you please me? Lydia Amanda. Silver, silver spring, silver spring, silver spring. Yes. Let me mute yourselves. 
Sorry, Mr. Snell. No, it's all right, mate. It's all right. It's not all right at all. Well, no, the trouble is they keep on coming out of uh, out of mute. I'm not sure why, but anyway, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Uh, okay, so there we have the uh, the the main types of reactions. I'm just going to show you again. Silver Spring, Silver Spring, something keeps on happening that you are unmuting, muting, unmuting. Could you just try to keep it muted, please? Thank you very much. I don't think it's your fault. I think something is happening on the microphone. We won't worry about it. So here we are. So this is... Uh, this is a, an equation here for the bottom here. Here is um, sugar, ordinary brown sugar, B12, H22, O11, with concentrated sulfuric acid turns into just carbon and water. Now, often the water, often the water uh, reacts with the sulfuric acid to produce so much heat that it produces steam. And I'll show you a video of that in just a minute. OK, I'll show you a video in a minute. But C12H22O11, if you know glucose, um, sucrose is very simple. Because if you look at glucose, most people can remember that glucose is C6H12O6. If I take two of those and I add them together, I get C12H24O12. But if I take out one water, then this becomes 22O11. OK, 22O11. And that's sucrose. So that there is sucrose and it turns into carbons and waters. And the water says here liquid, but very often it comes off as steam, as we'll see in just a minute. OK. Now, here I have some questions, some proper questions, uh, which we'll look at. Uh, and I want to show you why you have to learn the th things in a particular way. OK. So I'll let you have a look at them. But here is uh, a question. And it says this is a fresh uh, process, fresh pump. And it asks you, as though you are looking down on the pipes, and it asks you what's in pipe one, two, and three. Now, that may be quite difficult to remember. Unless we look at it, here's, here's the question alongside what we looked at at the beginning. There, remember this? Now, you have to imagine that you are looking down on this diagram here on the, on the right-hand side, in which case you can see the center pipe on the question number one is the middle one there two is the one with the sulfur in and three is the one with superheated water or steam in okay so in number one it's going to be air going down in number two it's sulfur coming up and number three it's the superheated steam or water what Property, uh, you will get this uh, presentation. Your teacher will get this presentation so they can they can show you all these questions. OK, they can show you them all uh, afterwards if you uh, if you want to see them or, or use them as practice. Um, what property of concentrated sulfuric acid is shown by it reacting with sugar and with copper metal? These are real examination questions. This is exactly what we have just done. Sugar is dehydrated and Oxid. copper metal is oxidized. So they are exactly what we have just done. OK, important to realize that what we are trying to do here is to get ready to pass examination questions. And you guys are very, very good staying after school to do this. 
Uh, what we are trying to do is to make it a little bit easier for you to know what might come up. Here is uh, another question. This one is all about the contact process. It's a bit small to see, but it says sulfur and air makes gas A. Gas A goes through something to make sulfur four oxide. It, and then it says it goes in a liquid to make a hot, through a hot solid C, which becomes SO3. And then it forms oleum which has water added to become concentrated sulfuric acid. Why are A and air oxygen purified? Ah, that is the one about poisoning the catalyst. So the catalyst is not poison. Write an equation for the fo formation of oleum. The formation of oleum was here, here. SO3 plus H2SO4 makes H2S2O7. That's the equation for forming oleum. See, it's not very complicated. There are actually only four equations here. S plus O2, SO2, SO2 to SO3, SO3 with sulfuric to make oleum, oleum plus water. So these, they could ask a question about any four, any one of these four. There, there it is. Write an equation for the formation of oleum. And that's what we've just done. And what is C likely to be? Well, C is the catalyst. And the catalyst was vanadium pentoxide or vanadium 5 oxide. OK. That's another one about the frash. Name the process. Oh, yeah, frash process. OK, easy. What is passed down pipe J? Pipe J, that's the middle one. Look at these. These questions keep on coming up. J, that's the middle one. That's the air. Name the two allotropes of sulfur, monoclinic and rhombic. There are actually more than two allotropes, but they've said two. What is happening with sulfuric acid here? What is, look, look here. There's sulfuric acid in sulfur six, and here is SO2. What did we say? We said when H2SO4 produces SO2, it is being an oxidizing agent. So the carbon is being oxidized to CO2. And here what is happening is that the water is being stolen from this. OK, the water is being taken out, not just this water, but the elements of water here to leave it as um, less atoms of hydrogen oxygen in here. That's dehydration. OK. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, in this, oh, sorry, my photograph is covering this bit, which says barium carbonate. With barium carbonate, um, the problem is that barium reacts with sulfur oxides to form um, uh, barium sulfite and barium sulfate. That's why it is. Uh, and we won't look at the bottom question at the moment because I want, it's nearly time to go. So I just want to show you this little video. Uh, this is a video from uh, the UK. It's called the, the uh, Royal Society of Chemistry. And I'm going to just show you a little bit of it. And what it is, is a beaker uh, with some sugar in, very purified sugar, this. And this is concentrated sulfuric acid. They have it in what we call a fume cupboard or fume hood. And uh, we will see what happens. I'm going to zoom through the video to a point a little bit later on. So I'm going to go through to about six minutes. OK, this is I'll just stop her just for a minute. Oh, sorry. Let's go back just a moment. If you look at what she is working in, this is a, a, a fume cupboard where the, the air gets pulled up and taken out through a filter. 
So any poisonous gases, toxic gases, irritant gases do not uh, bother you. So here we are. Okay, she is now going to stir because the uh, concentrated sulfuric acid is stir sitting on the top and she's now going to stir it so it mixes properly. And you can see it is starting to change colour already, but you wait. Uh oh. This is uh, speeded up. This is it speeded up. Wow. So what, what has happened here? is that the uh, sulfur, the sulfuric acid, has taken the uh, elements of water out of the, um, out of the uh, uh, out of sugar, and is left with carbon, but all the steam that was given off was due to um, the heat produced when water and sulfuric acid react together. Let's go just back a bit. This is the speed up version in just a moment. Here we go. Right. All right, this is the speed it up version. And you will see steam coming out here. This is steam. And it is blowing the carbon apart, which is why there is so much more of it afterwards. And it is hard. The substance is quite hard afterwards. Okay. What is what is happening here? You please, thank you. So what is happening here is that oh why can't I write? For some reason I cannot write. Let's try here. Okay. Ah yes. So I said C twelve H twenty two O eleven and it turns into 12 carbons and the 11 waters. Now, this is not, I'm not answering the question. I'm just using the space to write the equation. Only because it's very, because this is concentrated sulfuric acid and concentrated sulfuric acid and water react in a particularly violent exothermic way, this actually becomes a gas. And so the sugar molecule gets destroyed and all the carbon gets steam pushing it apart which makes it into like a sort of almost like a sponge or a or a, a something like that like a foam okay so that's it acting as a dehydrating agent i hope that's useful okay that's it guys that's that's the end of the lesson for today um i hope that was useful um, you have covered, we have covered quite a lot of ground. I hope, I hope that it made sense. If you have a question and you want to wait for a minute and ask a question, something you weren't quite sure about, just wait for one moment. Um, 
and I will try to answer it. But otherwise, I will say Asante Sana, and uh, I'll see you again. Uh, next week, we are going to be doing energy and energetics, and I hope that's okay. So I'll say goodbye to Ushirika and Dandora and St. Mary's and Mathari and Silver Spring and Glory and Kibiro and anybody else. Thank you very much. So stay if you have a question, but otherwise, I will say goodbye. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Teacher Mark. Thank you very much, Headmaster Yestin. I hope it was okay. Thank you for the session. Bye. It's a pleasure. I'll stop recording. Michael. Bye. Michael, Bye. Leave a, a Dandora.